Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel, Steady with Danny. My name is Daniel Lottery and I'm excited to have you here. If you are new here, kindly subscribe to the channel and click on the post notification bell icon so that you don't miss any new video. From the title, I guess you already know what this video is about, so let's get right into it. Before we go ahead, we need to know what the main objectives are for this video. So at the end of this video, what I would like you to take out from this is what are open source tools and in particular Jupyter Notebooks, which is what we will be talking about in this video. There are various other notebooks which we can um, use, but for this video, we are actually going to focus on Jupyter Notebooks to help you create an account or download and install Jupyter Notebooks. Three introduce you to Jupyter Labs and Jupyter Notebook environment and four, our first code for data science and machine learning application in reservoir characterization, which will basically be importing our well logs into Jupyter Notebooks and visualizing it in a table form. This tutorial will be divided into two parts. So there will be two videos posted. Part one of this video will entail objectives one, two, and three. Past part two will entail part of objectives three and four. This will help you to easily follow the tutorials and not get bored. Jupyter notebooks are like documents where you can execute multiple programming codes one at a time. You can do everything from creating interactive maps and charts to creating interesting data visualizations and even embedding images and videos like I did previously here. Let me show you one of my researches which I conducted using Jupyter Notebooks. This research has been published recently in the Journal for Natural Gas Science and Engineering. In this research, I basically tried to predict net science and net play, where I actually predicted porosity, permeability, water saturation, and V shows. So in this video, I will show you how to access the open source design for interactive data science and scientific computing. D data scientists use Jupyter Notebooks because in data science, you are often exploring data or building models, and you need to see the output of part of your code quite frequently using Jupyter Notebooks. Jupyter Notebooks were also designed to be shared with others. You can actually tell stories using Jupyter Notebooks with your data by combining your code with explanatory text, output from your codes, videos, and images. So this is basically one of the interesting charts that you can perform with, with Jupyter Notebooks. And I'll take you through all this during tutorials on data pre-processing. In this section, I'll walk you through the process of signing up for a Jupyter Notebook account. You can try Jupyter out right now without installing anything. Just visit this link, jupyter.org slash try, which I'll also leave in the video description. By going to this link, you will get a temporary Jupyter server just, just for you, and which is run on mybinder.org. If you like it, then you can install Jupyter yourself onto your PC. I'll also leave a link to Anaconda where you can also download and install Jupyter Notebook onto your PC. You can also go to labs cognitiveclass.ai which is being provided to us by IBM Data Science Experience to create an online account and use Jupyter Notebooks. The IBM lab is compatible with Chrome, Firefox and Opera. For now, I tried with uh, Internet Explorer and it didn't actually work. So yeah, I think Chrome, Firefox and Opera should be used. You can go ahead and try other browsers, but if it doesn't work, just go back to Chrome, Firefox, and Opera. I'm not doing any advertisement for the browsers or for IBM, but basically I just enjoy using the IBM Cloud services for Jupyter Notebooks, and I enjoy using them on Google Chrome. So basically, when you visit the website, you get this interface where you can either create an account or you can log in with your social media account and get your own personal IBM cloud account. So you can log in with your LinkedIn, your Gmail, 
your github or your facebook so let me just log in with my linkedin then we can see how the interface works out so it's asking me to confirm that i'm not a robot which almost always does all right and voila so this is the interface that you get when you log in using your social media account you can either also create an account personal account and you have to activate it from your email so you need to use a correct email then once you activate it you log in and you get this interface so from this interface you just click on Jupyter Labs yeah so this is the lab environment you will get when you finally create your own um, IBM cloud account you have all this empty I have actually um, uploaded certain files and folders but yeah we will take you through this in the next section so in this section I'll introduce you to Jupyter Lab which is an environment that allows you to easily edit and organize Jupyter notebooks now you'll be hearing the terms Jupyter Lab and Jupyter Notebooks quite frequently. So just to clarify here, when I'm talking about Jupyter Notebook, I'm referring to the actual file. But when I'm talking about Jupyter Lab, then that's the environment that organizes various Jupyter Notebooks and allows you to run them. So this is actually a Jupyter Lab. Like this whole interface is a Jupyter Lab. You also learn how to upload data into Jupyter Lab, create your first Jupyter notebook, run some code, and add some text and images. So let's get right into it. When you open up Jupyter Lab for the first time, after creating your account and logging in, I mean, you see that on the left hand side here, you have your files directory. Well, I have a folder here, but basically you have an empty file directory. And this is where you can keep track of all your files. So to create more folders, you can actually click on this new folder to create a new folder. And it will be added right here. You can give it a name and name it tutorial. And then you are done. To actually add files, you can basically just drag and drop them into the file directory. So as you can see, you just drag and drop and it will be loaded into the file directory. These files were created from well logs in our previous video. If you haven't watched it, I'll leave a link so that you can go watch it so that you can actually convert your well logs into csv files or excel files and then upload them into jupyter notebooks so on the right hand side here we have another interface which is the launcher screen and this can help you create new jupyter notebooks currently we have the python Scalar, Julia, R, and Swift, and other interfaces, which are more for the more intermediate and experienced users to explore. In this video, we are just going to focus on the Jupyter Notebook. So we click on Jupyter Notebook section, and we are actually going to use Python. Yeah, it was taking some time because uh, maybe the file is huge. As we know that our last files are huge, but it has now been uploaded. So this is our Jupyter Notebook, right? And this Jupyter Notebook is being run using Python. So you can click on this and actually change the kernel that you want. You can either use Scalar, Julia R or Swift. Other, other than, than that, we are going to stick to Python. If you are having a problem with your environment, you can either click this button, which will interrupt the kernel, or you can actually restart the kernel. So 
so basically these are what you need and you you can use this button to also insert a cell below and you can cut your cells copy and paste them and this is the run button where you can use this to run a file so this gray cell here is our cell block so Jupyter notebook is made up entirely of cells as you can see in the notebook there's currently one cell because we haven't added a lot of cells but let's just get started in this cell let's just type something as simple as one plus one and then click run okay so see it has given us the output as to aside from run um, pressing run you can actually put in or input shift enter to run the cell okay and we can create more cells by using the plus button or you can either use press the escape key you can press the escape key to go out of the cell and press D to insert a cell below or A to insert a cell above and execute the code right and we can create different um, styles by using the pound symbol space and type my title and we execute it oh sorry this is a code file a code cell so you change it to a markdown then you press so you see it has changed it and there are other various things to do within a markdown syntax or a markdown cell change it to a markdown then here you have it but don't worry this video is not about styles or creating text a lot it's more about introducing you to the interface so i'll leave a link to a markdown cheat cheat sheet where you can actually follow for more um, learning that is if you are interested in this thank you very much for staying with me up to the end of this video if you like this video give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and share with your friends if you have any question or topic that you like help with in learning leave it down in the comment section and i'll try my best to attend to it click on the post notification bell icon so that you'll be alerted whenever a new video is uploaded here at steady with danny we teach in order to learn and we learn in order to teach stay safe bye bye